We are looking at a multi-day severe weather threat across the plains and deep south. We're going to get all into that in this video. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. Starting off in the plains over the next couple of days, and then by the weekend, transitioning into the deep south. So we're going to highlight the threat areas for all of these days and then show you the high-resolution future radar. Even could be a little bit of lake effect snow as we get up into New England and across the Great Lakes region. So we're going to have that for you as well. That's by the back half of your weekend. And then over the next 48 to 72 hours, we're going to have your high resolution future radar and temperatures for the United States and Canada. So stick around towards the end of the video for that. Before we get into it, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather as we move into severe weather season, as we wrap up whatever you want to call this winter, and then head into hurricane season, you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button. And if you happen to find this content helpful, hit that thumbs up button for me. Small ask, but it really does help us out a lot. I'd appreciate that. Alrighty, guys, post in the comments where you're tuning in from. We'd love to know, and especially if you're under one of these severe weather risk areas. So this is going to be the severe weather risk area for tomorrow. The date is on top here in case you are watching this a little bit later, but this is going to be March 7th. Again, that's going to be Thursday. We're on that slight risk, that level 2 out of 5 here on the severe weather scale as designated by the Storm Prediction Center. And you see where the relatively speaking higher threat level is, and that's going to be from just to the east of San Angelo into Waco, just to the north of San Antonio, into Fort Worth through Lawton, Oklahoma City on the western side anyway, through Enid into Wichita. That level one out of five, that marginal risk, that lower end severe weather threat, meaning that we could have an isolated strong storm or two from Fayetteville, Arkansas into Joplin, Missouri, extending up into Emporia, Kansas, and then back down onto the northwest side of San Antonio. That does include us in San Angelo. So that's going to be tomorrow's threat. The risk area expands as we get into Friday. That's going to be on March 8th. And I do think we're going to see the opportunity for some higher end severe weather, at least a higher risk area as we get into Friday, Saturday, into Sunday. We'll show you that part of this as well coming up. So here we go on March 8th. This is going to extend from the Florida Panhandle. That's going to include Pensacola just to the west of Tallahassee into Monroeville, Jackson, Mississippi, Shreveport, Lake Charles, New Orleans. Hope you guys are doing well. Again, we're going to be watching for that severe weather threat. So again, this is a heads up for us getting into Friday. So you're going to want to pay attention to this again as we move forward into Texarkana to about Dallas into Waco and then Fort Smith. Now for us into Joplin to San Antonio and Houston, our severe weather threat is not zero. It's one out of five. So it's that marginal risk again, that isolated severe weather threat. But nonetheless, we're still going to be under the gun. Just our threat level is not going to be as high as areas to our east, north, and south, depending upon where you are and where you're watching from. All right, so here's the high resolution future radar now. And this is starting things off again tomorrow. This is Thursday, March 7th. And you see where we could have some storms ongoing to the west of Dallas and right smack dab in the heartland of Texas, getting into Hot Springs, Arkansas. And then we have a few of these clusters of thunderstorms into central Missouri and then right along the Kansas-Oklahoma line. Now, this is going to work its way to the east, and we're going to be watching for a mini tornado threat kind of right here through central Texas. Now, all of this stuff is going to spread to the east, or at least try to spread to the east, as we get into Friday afternoon here we go on the 8th again this is going to be on friday five o'clock into the evening some heavier rain the potential for strong thunderstorms from about tuscaloosa into jackson new orleans again into shreveport then we have this secondary area that we are watching back toward hot springs into dallas oklahoma city as well so those are going to be the threat areas now it kind of expands and pushes to the east as we get into Saturday, we are outlooked already by the Storm Prediction Center uh, day three and day four. I'll show you that risk area in just one second and break down some of the analogs. But here is what it looks like as we get into Saturday. This is going to be in the morning and some heavy rain potential for some strong storms moving through the panhandle of Florida, through Atlanta into south central Georgia, into the Carolinas, specifically South Carolina. Some heavy rain getting into Kentucky as well. And then we're going to take you back to the north. And this is where we could have some snow. Snow, again on the northern side of Maine into Vermont and then all of this junk is going to be lake effect stuff again as we get some wrap around the low is going to be right about there and then we have that northwest wind over the unfrozen lakes and this is a byproduct of how warm the winter has been typically by the time we get into February we do start to see some thawing in March but typically we have especially Lake Erie frozen over and the lake effect machine has well shut off. We typically see that come to an end by the time we get into January. So the lake effect snow machine going to be cranked up again as we get that colder air to move over the unfrozen and relatively warm Great Lakes. So something that is 
kind of crazy uh, as we move to at this time of the year, that lake effect machine kind of uh, sticking back up. Before we get into the weather across the U.S. and Canada, I want to show you uh, some of the analogs and in comparison to the Storm Prediction Center outlook. I'm going to get my head out of the way here so I can show you a little bit better. What we're looking at here is I bring, uh, click on this. This is going to be the Storm Prediction Center outlook for day three. So now we're going to be getting into the ninth. So this is going to be as we move into Saturday, okay? So that's going to be your Saturday outlook. And you see that 15% area where we showed you the high resolution future radar. These are a couple of different analogs. This analog is going to be from Colorado State, and then this is the SIPS analog. So a couple of different ones, but it paints kind of a bullseye here where we could be looking for a severe weather threat increase over the next couple of days. We'll, of course, keep you posted, but you see that higher probability, that 30% shot around the Louisiana-Mississippi border, and then even on the Colorado State analog here, that little red area. You know, it's kind of small and hard to see, but right kind of in there through central Mississippi. So we're going to be watching for that. Now, as we move into day four, that says that's the storm system kind of wraps up and slides up into the northeast a little bit. We have the Storm Prediction Center giving it that 15% shot right there. And then we have kind of the analogs to match that through parts of South Central Georgia. And then uh, the SIPS analog, again, showing uh, the probabilities there for that severe weather threat enhancement there as we move into uh, the weekend. So that's something that we're going to be watching for over the next couple of days. I want to show you also the reason for this, at least the uh, the upper level pattern for this. I think that's important to always show here. And we're going to start things off on Thursday. This is 11 o'clock in the morning again on the 7th of March. And we see our dip in the jet stream right out here coming out of uh, the desert southwest in northern Mexico and sliding through. And it's going to be the strong westerlies aloft again that's going to keep that severe weather threat with us through the parts of the deep south and plains Friday into Saturday. And you kind of see here the appendage break off we have our main up below right here we have a piece of this still stuck in the south but the main storm system at this point is right here and again that's what's going to bring the heavy rain and then some lake effect snow into the northeast so over the next couple of days if you're not impacted by those i do want to show you again what the weather is going to be like across the country and parts of canada we have another system coming through on the west coast of the united states specifically us in california another one of these atmospheric rivers to give us more snow in the Sierras. This is certainly not going to be as impactful as the one we just got blasted with, that big-time blizzard last weekend. But nonetheless, some mountain snow, some rain coming to Southern California. As we get into Wednesday, uh, the rest of March 6th, so tonight again, we have that one system leaving. Now, here's that bigger system again that's going to be materializing on Thursday into Friday. That's, again, going to give us that severe weather risk, but we're also going to have the opportunity for some snow uh, in the foothills uh, to the east of the Rocky Mountains through Denver into Rapid City into the panhandle of Nebraska. Then the system kind of slides to the east. So for us in Canada, this is going to be north of Toronto and Ottawa. So Musanoe and Labrador City, we could get some snow up in that direction for us in northern Canada. Again, there's just not a ton of cold air for this to work with to kind of bleed into the lower 48. Now, we talked about this yesterday that we were going to get a mini blast of cold into the northern tier of the country, and here it is. This is going to be early on Thursday morning. Bismarck, we're back to the teens. Billings, we're back to the teens. We're at 12 below in Edmonton. That's Fahrenheit, 25 below Celsius. Calgary, we're pretty chilly. Bearskin Lake, we are pretty chilly as well relatively speaking in all things considered for how this winter has gone so far for us in parts of Canada into the northern tier of the United States. Now moving into Thursday afternoon, again, pretty chilly across just the northern tier of the country. We're still in the 40s though in Minneapolis, so pretty warm. And then the 70s holding on uh, across parts of the uh, deep south and into the cor southeast corner. And again, it's going to be that warmth that kind of surges up that is going to fuel that severe weather threat for the next couple of days, really from Thursday until we get into uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that four-day threat there that we're going to be watching. And of course, we're going to have the latest high-resolution modeling for you. And again, the latest outlook from the Storm Prediction Center and kind of the evolution here with that upper-level pattern as this uh, transitions from the West Coast and the deep south, the desert southwest, and then works its way up into the northeast. Thank you guys a ton for tuning in. Any questions, post them in the comments. I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. Post those in the comments as well. And if you found this content helpful, and if you're a weather nerd like me and want to stay updated on the science and meteorology of the weather as we venture through the rest of winter, what's left of it anyway, 
severe weather season that is right around the corner. It could be rocking in the traditional tornado alley this year. And as we venture into what could be a very active hurricane season, again, if you've come to the right place, we'd love to have you on board. Hit that subscribe button for me, and we will catch you next time.